Hey again, we discussed problem 44 in class and we gave an outline of the solutions to parts A, B, and C, where we had to solve for the initial speed that the armadillo left the ground as he jumped off the ground. When he reached this 0.544 meters height, uh, we found that speed at that particular point, which we called the final velocity, because it was the final velocity for that consideration of the segments. And then in part C, we considered a slightly different segment going from that 0.544 meters up to the highest point. And that we found was that a difference of 0.154 meters higher, or if you looked in absolute terms from the ground, from the very initial starting point up to that highest point, it's a total distance of 0.698 meters. And one thing I tacked onto the problem is, hey, why don't you draw graphs of position or displacement versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. So if you haven't tried that already, I encourage you to take the data that we've solved for and try it out. See what you come up with for the graphs. Come up with a line for each of, the, of them or a curve, right, before you go on. So go ahead and pause the video right here. Okay, I'm gonna trust that you are now ready, that you've done something. So whenever I'm approaching these three graphs, especially with the free fall problem, I like to start with the acceleration. Why? Well, as long as the armadillo is in the air, we know exactly what the acceleration is. It is always that constant negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's something we can draw in. Boom, right there. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared with a label for all of time. You could technically stop it when the armadillo hits the ground if you wanted, because once the armadillo is on the ground, no longer accelerating. So that gives us a definite point that we can follow on all these other ones, that this is the time when the armadillo hits the ground. And we don't actually know what that time is. We didn't have to solve for it. We could have solved for it in this problem. Probably the easiest way would be to figure out the time at the highest point of the motion from the ground to the highest point, and then you can double it because of the symmetry. But that's beyond the scope of this problem. All right, now for the position and the velocity graphs, this is where we can use our data points that we have, right? So notice we know our y max is point 698 meters. And we also know where our armadillo starts. Our armadillo starts on the ground, right? At y is equal to zero. And finishes on the ground. That's when the armadillo hits. And so there's this maximum height that will be right in the middle. And we can label that as our 0 0.698 meters. We could also fill in our 0 0.544 meters but that's not as critical, and we don't know exactly where that will be um, between these points. So notice, I'm not even trying to put a curve or a line yet. I'm just looking at my data points. I'll do the same thing for velocity. So we have our very initial velocity is this 3.7 meters per second. That is a positive quantity because the armadillo is jumping up. So that means we're going to need to fill in a positive velocity here. The 0 0.70 meters per second. Now we do have a final velocity again at that intermediate point, the 0 0.544 meters. That's not so useful for the plot. The most useful one is what we used in part C to solve for the highest point. And we said that at that highest point, the velocity is zero because it briefly stops there. So in my graph of velocity versus time, that means at this highest point in the middle, the velocity has to be equal to zero. So those are some key data points to fill in. And one, now that we've filled those in, we can bring in our knowledge of calculus in order to finish the graphs. So we know that um, the derivative of velocity with respect to time is acceleration. So if we want to figure out the graph of velocity based on acceleration one, we need the antiderivative. So if acceleration has a constant value 
at all times, that tells us that it's the derivative, the slope of the velocity versus time has to be constant with all time. In other words, a constant acceleration tells us that velocity needs to have a constant slope or it needs to be a straight line. So since we have two points and we know it is a straight line, we can just fill in a straight line here. And notice this line has a downward slope. It is a negative slope. You could figure out the slope of it. It would be exactly negative 9.8. or our negative g. So that's not a coincidence. Another thing we could figure out from symmetry here is that the velocity at the bottom would be the exact same speed as the beginning, but now in the negative direction. So that's a little bit of a bonus data point. All right, finally, we need to get to what kind of line we draw for our, our position versus time knowing our velocity and acceleration ones. And as we look at our velocity graph, we know that um, the derivative of the position with respect to time is the velocity. So we need to pay attention to how the velocity is changing with time. The velocity is constantly changing with time. It's steadily changing, it's not a constant value. So that tells us that the um, position graph will not be a straight line. If anything, we need to have a constantly changing slope so that we can have a constantly changing velocity. So what this means is we need to have a curved line. It needs to be parabolic. You can also see this from the equations of kinematics or constant acceleration equations. So we have our endpoints here. To get the curves, all we need to do is connect the endpoints. So there's two different possibilities here. One is we could connect the two points going down and up. The other, so we could, it could look something sort of like that. The other way that we could connect the points would be a smooth curve as below. And the way you can tell this is by looking at the slope. The slope should be steadily changing because the velocity is steadily changing with a slope of zero at the top because the velocity is zero at the top. So the top needs to have a slope of zero to match the velocity of zero in the middle and needs to have the largest values at either edge here because that is when the velocity has its largest values, positive or negative. So the only way to have a smooth connection on those is to have a curve. All right, so there we have our three graphs of position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time while the armadillo is in the air. We could also show that velocity goes to zero after the armadillo reaches the ground. That's not usually shown too much, and the position will stay at zero as well. So there we have it. If you have questions on this, please do ask. I would love to talk further on it. All right. Catch you later.